As a queen of procrastination, I love to defer all of my responsibilities until the last final moment. Little did I know, when handling a giant mess of spaghetti code, this is actually really useful for cleaning up Golang code. Wow. wow. The defer keyword is something completely <laughs> ingenious but insanely helpful. Defer places a function call onto a stack, which then later gets called when the function in which they were added in returns. All of the function calls using defer get placed onto a stack. So that means they're gonna be called in last in, first out order. In China, last in comes first. For instance, I wanna open a file, do some stuff to it, then close it. The thing is, I know for a fact that when I open a file, I'm gonna have to close it at some point. Otherwise, it's gonna cause an open file error. However, what happens if some errors happen along the way as I do this stuff? Eric was right. You're a white witch. What happens if this causes my function to get interrupted? Then I never reach my function that actually closes the file. I can either put a bunch of checks throughout my code or just use defer. I can immediately call the defer keyword after opening the file. This is a much more intuitive and also organized way I can go about file IO. However, keep in mind, when you place the function call on the stack, whatever return values that are in the defer call stack are just going to be discarded when the function completes. This also isn't just exclusive for file IO. This can apply to mutexes, channels, or go routines. Because these function calls are placed on a stack, if there are multiple defer statements in a function, they will be called in reverse order. If I stacked a bunch of books and wanted to look at each book, I would pick one up off the top one at a time. Be careful with using defer in some scenarios. If the function call that defer refers to evaluates to null by the time it actually gets called, the function will actually panic. This is no life. Another note, be cognizant when using defer in a loop. Keep in mind that the deferred function calls will not be reached until the function returns, not when the loop ends. Sometimes when calling defer in a loop, it can use up all the stack space for the function itself. So it's usually best to just not use defer in this scenario. Finally, whenever you make a deferred function call that may contain a state or an object that can be changed, whatever state that it's in at that time when the defer statement is used, the variables within it are saved immediately. Bye, Felicia. That means if you're trying to make changes after you call defer, it will not be reflected when it actually gets to the function call in the defer stack. Bye, have a great time. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more programming content. And leave a comment below what you think of using defer. See ya.